G'day team, Neil from Fitness Enhancement here. Now one of the reoccurring themes that keeps coming up in conversation between my clients and myself is my personal nutrition, what I eat and the reasons that I eat it. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking for a sneak peek inside my kitchen, inside my fridge and my cupboard and basically talking about some of the nutritional choices that I make and the reason that I make those choices. Now the big caveat here is I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian. Uh, this is not dietary advice, this is purely what I eat and the reasons that I choose to eat them. However, my good friend Terry Ann Preston is a registered and accredited dietitian and I'll be tagging her in on this video. So if you have any questions above and beyond the information that I give you here, something else that you'd want to know about that goes outside my own personal scope of practice, by all means, whack it in the comments section below. We'll tag Terry Ann and we'll get her to answer any questions that are that's outside of my scope of practice. All right, now team, just as importantly as what's on the inside of my fridge is what's on the outside of my fridge. So let's have a quick look. Rightio, so to keep me honest, I've got Arnold on my fridge. There he is. Which one do you want more? Okay, choice is entirely yours. I'm not going to lie, I like junk food. I don't keep it in the house. But if it is here for the kids or for uh, anybody else, this is my gentle reminder. And last but not least, I've got my own uh, macros or macronutrient ratio. So what I eat in terms of calories, carbs, uh, fats, and proteins. All right, let's have a look inside the fridge. Rightio, so in terms of uh, health, uh, high in protein, high in good fats, one of the few foods that actually contains all nine essential amino acids, and they're actually reasonably low in calories. There's, uh, I think from memory, 77 calories per large egg. So they're, they're not really dense in calorie, meaning you can get away with eating a few of them. On that note, one of my biggest bugbears is when people ask me, should I take the yolk out of my egg? I answer that question with a series of questions. Number one, why would you want to take the yolk out? Number two, what type of fat is in the egg? Is it good fat or is it bad fat? Number three, how much fat should you be eating in a day? Number four, how much fat are you eating in a day? Number five, how many of those egg yolks can you eat to fit your macronutrients? If you can't answer any of them, then you shouldn't be asking, do I need to take my egg yolks out of my egg? Coffee, lots of it. My drug of choice. You don't need pre-workout, you don't need supplements, just have black coffee before a workout. Cottage cheese, high in protein, uh, about mid-level good fats, uh, low in carbs. Okay, the type of protein that you find in cottage cheese is called casein protein, and it's a slow digesting protein. So what this means is if you've had a big workout during the day, the time that your body's going to recover generally is while you're sleeping. So by having some cottage cheese before bed, it's a slow digesting and slow release protein, which means that throughout the night you're going to get a, uh, a constant feed of protein repairing your muscles while you're sleeping. So slow release protein is the key with cottage cheese. Uh, the only drawback of cottage cheese, it is reasonably high in sodium, so you do need to watch your salt intake. Uh, but if you're having it in moderation, it's not a big issue. Chocolate rabbit. Easter's coming. Audio. Low fat Greek yogurt. Now, because I'm a reasonably boring individual, this is just the, uh, the no name Aldi's brand, it's not too flash in flavour. Greek yogurt, generally speaking, has twice the protein of regular yogurt but it has about half the sugars, okay, or well, half the lactose, so it's lower in sugar, higher in protein. You generally find as well it's a bit thicker and a bit creamier, the reason being they, uh, during the manufacturing of the, uh, the Greek yogurt, they drain the liquid out of it, which leaves it with that thicker, creamier texture. If you need a little bit of flavour, uh, look at your, I think it's called the Jalna Greek yogurt, you can get them from Coles, they are amazing, they're up there with ice cream. A little bit higher sugar content because it is sweetened, but still a much better option than your regular ski flavoured yogurts or, or ice cream, of course. So this is generally my go-to dessert is a bit of Greek yogurt. Right, yo team. Salads. Lots of them. Green, red, it doesn't matter. Salad is the key. So if you're in a uh, calorie controlled diet or you're in a calorie deficit, one of the issues that you're going to face is that you're probably going to get a little bit hungry. This is the solution to overcoming hunger while losing weight. Reason being, apart from the fact that obviously salad is high in all your uh, minerals and vitamins that you need, you can pretty much eat salad until your eyes fall out of your head and you're not going to come anywhere near your calorie content for the day. Okay, It's very, very low calorie, meaning you can eat a high quantity of it without it affecting your calorie count too much. Chuck a little bit of olive oil on there or a little bit of balsamic vinegar, about a tablespoon of each. 
um, to give it a bit of flavour and it's, it's still good fat so it's not going to blow your calorie count out for the day. Okay, the other thing about salad is it's high in fibre, okay? So people talk about fibre, uh, but they don't actually know the role of fibre in a diet. So essentially, I like to think of fibre as nature's broom. It is the non-digestible part of a food. It goes in, it can't be digested, it comes out and it takes a lot of the waste with it, okay? So it's important to make sure you're getting the right amount of fibre in your diet to help clean you out and keep you regular. Ice cold vodka from the freezer. Why? Cause I'm only human after all And you're only human after all Don't put the blame on me Alrighty, so Olive oil and coconut oil Both very high in good fat So again, used in moderation as a part of a balanced diet Okay, an essential part of hitting those macronutrients And I've drummed on a bit about fat But the thing is that what people don't realize is that those good fats are responsible for hormone production. Now, I'm not going to go too much into it because it's a little bit outside of my uh, scope of practice. But if you want to know a little bit more about the role of good fats in hormone production, chuck a question in, uh, in the comments below and we'll get Terry ann to, uh, to go a little bit further in depth for you. Alrighty, so what we have here is frozen white fish. This is uh, Hokai fillets and chicken breast. I generally get about a kilo and a half of chicken breast cook it up in the oven, bake it up at the beginning of the week, and I have it chopped into 300 gram portions so it's ready to go. I can chuck it into a salad, chuck it on a sandwich, have it as is, boom. Why 300 grams? That works out to what I need for my personal protein requirements for the day, so it just makes it convenient. Where people tend to fall over with their diet is when things become difficult and they have to start cooking and preparing food, it's an easier option to just open a packet of something. With the fish, I've got a uh, microwave steamer, four minutes in the steamer in there, I've got fish ready to go. Okay, Zero carb in both, good fats in both, and high in protein. Okay, Should be a staple in any diet, white fish and chicken breast. Rightio, so in line with the salads, green veggies. I get all mine frozen rather than fresh, it's just more convenient that way, and I can bang my freezer up with them. These cost 99 cents at Aldi per bag. I don't have to think about the macros because they're all written on the bag for me. I can just bust the bag out, cook it up. So this is spinach I've got here. Okay, high in protein, high in iron, low in carbs, and you can throw it in a curry, throw it in a salad. You can do pretty much anything with it, okay? It doesn't taste like anything, so you can mix it with anything to give it a bit of flavor, okay? 99 cents, can't be beaten. Skim milk. So generally I get most of my uh, calcium from the Greek yogurt and the cottage cheese. About the only time I really have milk is in my coffee after midday. I drink black coffee up until midday. After that, I put a couple of tablespoons of skim milk. Okay, why skim milk? Okay, lower in fat, higher in protein, and I've been drinking for so long it doesn't taste like anything to me. It's just milk. So if I was to drink full cream milk, it tastes like I'm drinking a cup of cream. You know, it's one of those things you get used to it. Rightio, so for the kids, I generally keep a whole pile of fresh fruit. Apples, pears, oranges, strawberries, bananas, you name it. For the more savoury snacks for taking to school, what we have here is light air popped popcorn. It's got next to nothing in it. You may as well be eating air. That one little bag there makes enough to make three morning teas. Okay. I also do get little fruit cups. Okay, These are 100% fruit. There's no preservatives, nothing added. It's essentially just blended apple and water. So that is 100% apple puree. Uh, so they can take it to school without worrying about, well, finding a squash bruise apple in the bottom of their bag when they come home. Anybody out there as a parent knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so also for the kids, in lieu of chips and cream biscuits and all that sort of stuff, uh, some Vitagrain Bickies, uh, chop up some tomato, the kids love it. Same thing, we've got the, uh, the, the rice wheel or the flavoured rice cakes. Again, a little bit high in salt, but when you compare it to, say, eating a whole pile of Arnott's cream biscuits or giving them a pack of chips, it's, it doesn't even register on the scale. So this is what I use. Whack some cream cheese uh, or uh, some tomato on it, and it's good to go for a snack for the kids. Nice and healthy. Rightio, team. And that's it. So that's pretty much a sneak peek inside my kitchen. There's a few other bits and pieces in there that aren't really worth going over, but that's the nuts and guts of it. If you've got any uh, questions about anything that we've covered today, by all means, Whack them in the comments below. If I can answer it, I will. If it's a little bit outside of my scope of practice, we'll tag Terry Anna, and she's more than happy to answer any questions to go a little bit further in depth. Guys, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.